LSTM stands for Long Short Term Memory. So now let's try to get a better understanding of how LSTM looks like with the help of diagrams. Here's how a standard recurrent neural network can be represented. We have passed the input xt along with the output from the previous node, which is ht-1 to this central node. Then apply the 10h activation function and generate the output, which is ht. Now here's how we can present the LSTM recurrent neural network. Its repeating module has a bit different structure. Instead of having a single neural network layer, four interacting layers are communicating extraordinary. This complete box is called the LSTM cell. It has three main parts, the cell state, the hidden state, and the gates, like forget, which also known as, remember, input and output gate. As you can see in this diagram, it's not just a straight turnage. Of course, we have that component here, but in addition, we have three sigmoid components. So let's expand this diagram to get a closer look. Here's, first of all, just take a look at this part in the top. We can see that the information is going in a straight line right there. And we call this the cell state, which means the state of the cell. At a certain state, we are multiplying whatever this value with the state value there. So the cell state is modified. If that value is 1, then we are not modifying the state value. But why? I'll explain in a few moments. Next, here we are doing an addition. That's all about the cell state. Here's what we called the hidden state. The hidden state is meant to encode a kind of characterization of the previous time steps data. It is important to note that the hidden state doesn't equal the output or the prediction. It is merely an encoding of the most recent time steps. That said, the hidden state at any point can be processed to obtain more meaningful data. In other words, the cell state acts as a transport highway that transfers relative information all the way down the sequence chain. You can think of it as the memory of the network. The cell state can carry relevant information throughout the processing of the sequence. So even information from the earlier time steps can make its way to the later time steps, reducing the effect of short-term memory. As the cell state goes on its journey, information gets added or removed to the cell state via the gates. The gates are different neural networks that decide which information is allowed on the cell state. In other words, the gates can learn what information is relevant to keep or forget during training. We have three different gates that regulate information flow in an LSTM cell. The first one is the forget gate. As you can see the highlighted portion of the diagram, this gate decides what information should be thrown away or kept. Information from the previous hidden state, which we called the HT-1, and the information from the current input, which we called the XT, is passed through the sigmoid function. Values come out between 0 and 1. The closer to 0 means to forget, and the closer to 1 means to keep. And that's the reason we are not modifying the state of the cell when this value is 1. To update the cell state, we have the input gate. In this layer, there are two parts. One is the sigmoid function, and the other one is the 10h function. In the sigmoid function, it decides which value to let through by transforming the values to be between 0 and 1. 0 means not important, and 1 means important. Then, the 10h function gives weightage to the values which are passed, deciding their level of importance by sequestering them between minus 1 and 1. Then, we multiply the 10h output with the sigmoid output. The sigmoid output will decide which information is important to keep from the 10h output. Now, at this stage, we have enough information to calculate the cell state. We will utilize the output from the forget gate and from the input gate to perform this calculation, which gives us a new cell state. 
Next, we have the output gate. The output gate decides what the next hidden state should be. Remember that the hidden state contains information on previous inputs. The hidden state is also used for predictions. First, we pass the previous hidden state, which is h of t minus 1, and the current input, which is xt, into a sigmoid function. Then we pass the newly modified cell state to the tan h function. We multiply the tan h output with the sigmoid output to decide what information the hidden state should carry. The output is the hidden state. The new cell state and the new hidden state are then carried over to the next time step. In simple words, here the sigmoid layer decides which part of the cell state will be present in the output, whereas tan h layer shifts the output in the range of minus 1 to 1. That's how an LSTM recurrent neural network performs the learning while taking the long context into account.